Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today we're going to discuss the top 5 reasons why you will fail at keeping a saltwater tank and how to avoid them. Number 1. Lack of knowledge. This is a difficult one to realise because a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. Humans have an inherent lack of self-awareness and when combined with a little bit of knowledge it can give you a false sense of security which in turn means you lack the ability to understand just how much you don't know. I see this all the time on Facebook and forums. Someone will ask a question, and an entirely well-meaning idiot will answer with what they believe is correct, sometimes with absolute conviction, and will fight to the death over it without realising they're wrong. Just because someone can shout the loudest doesn't mean they're right. Choose your source of knowledge carefully, and even then, don't follow people blindly. I am well aware that I have made statements before which I didn't know were incorrect. Even I have my days of being a well-meaning idiot. My video on gem tanks come to mind, where the information I put out wasn't incorrect, but it was outdated. Accept that even now, some of your beliefs that you are absolutely convinced are real across all aspects of your life are wrong. I promise you. Remember, at one point people were absolutely convinced that witches were real. Once you accept this, it's liberating because it opens your mind to the possibility of other ideas. You should never stop learning with this hobby and as soon as you do it will kick your ass. When given the chance to learn from someone who knows more than me, I absolutely take it, and so should you. Try to absorb as much good information as possible, ask yourself if it makes logical sense, and always question the source of it. If someone appears to know everything, but has a terrible tank, does that make logical sense? If you want to be better at keeping a saltwater tank, Assuming you're terrible at it can get you pretty far, as it makes you strive to better your abilities. Number 2. Lack of testing. I have no doubt that this is the one that people will comment on the most, stating that they don't do any testing and their tank is fine, or they don't test specific parameters. The question I have for you though, is it sustainable? You might be able to get by for a month without testing, maybe even 6 months or a year, but at some point something will go wrong. Something will die and your tank will punish you for it, both financially and with your time. Because by then it will probably take a lot more money and effort to put it right than just sitting down and testing once a week. It can take months for a minor problem to build up so much that it's noticeable visually, but by then it can take months to fix it as well. Remember, if stability is key, positive steps can be just as risky as negative steps. For example, you let your phosphate get too high. That's a negative step. You do what you think is a good idea and use loads of phosphate remover to deal with it. A positive step only to then have your corals die anyway because they have adapted to higher levels of phosphate and it dropped too quickly. It would have been far better to test at the beginning and not let them get too high. Hindsight is 2020. Number 3. Overcomplicating things. By doing the Skype consultations and speaking to literally hundreds of people all over the world at all different stages of their reefing journey, I've realised that this is one of the biggest threats to your success in the hobby. Stop trying to turbocharge your tank, at least at first anyway. If you're an experienced reefer, and I mean seriously experienced, by all means experiment. If you're less than a few years in though, just master the basics first. Here is a little secret for you. I've done my experimenting with smaller systems, however now that I have thousands of corals in the farm, I don't feed any of them other than the fish food they catch, I don't try to boost my pH, I don't run elevated levels of alkalinity, there are no bottles of magic mysterious elixirs, I blindly dose in the hope something will happen, I just mastered the basics. All of those things can improve growth and coloration, but at first set your bar very low. Make keeping these animals alive for an extended period of time your goal. It is frustrating for me to see so many people both killing corals and becoming disheartened because they are inadvertently making things worse while trying to make things grow faster. 
Trust me, a dead coral doesn't grow anywhere near as fast as a living one. Number 4. Going too quickly. This hobby can be incredibly addictive. To some extent, I actually think it's not far off gambling sometimes, because every purchase is a gamble as to if we have the ability to keep it alive. The addictive nature of the hobby actually goes deeper than that though. It has been well documented that a well-maintained aquarium helps to reduce stress, anxiety, and quite literally releases positive chemicals into our brains. Isn't that what drugs do? So if you find yourself going to the fish shop every weekend, or buying a fish instead of paying your bills, you now know why. You can't help it, it's a disease. As with anything that provides us happiness, there is a diminished return over time. This is why the buzz you get from new fish or coral doesn't feel the same a few weeks later. What happens is you will start to seek a new high. A new fish, a coral, or over time, rarer, more expensive livestock because the days when a couple of clownfish and an aptasia gave you your fix are long gone. This can cause people to move too fast, too quickly. If stability is key, nothing screws with the balance of your tank like adding new fish or coral constantly. Each new introduction comes with the possibility to impact the fish's hierarchy, parameters, flow, pest or disease introduction, and many more. Take your time. This hobby is a marathon, not a sprint, and no one really wants a full tank anyway. That's an illusion. We think we do, but trust me, the people with full tanks are the ones that are bored and want a bigger tank. Be careful what you wish for. Number 5. Laziness. I'll be completely honest with you, this is the most likely one to trip me up. It is well known when it comes to doing things I don't want to do, I struggle to find the motivation. It's not from lack of ability, it's not even from lack of time, it purely comes down to lack of desire. There are two options when it comes to laziness. Either be better, put on your big boy or girl pants, realise the responsibility we have for these animals, and that they aren't disposable and do what needs to be done. It can help if you're accountable to someone, Ever notice that when your friends come over, the tank is suddenly clean? Funnily enough, it was my parents that kept me accountable. I moved a five foot tank into their house and set it up while they were on holiday without them realizing. Sometimes it's easier to ask for forgiveness rather than get permission. And as far as I'm concerned, it was one of the best things I ever did. The one thing they promised me though, if it ever looked anything other than spotless, they would get rid of it, and I knew they meant it. That tank was the most spotless tank I've ever owned. An alternative to self-motivation is to automate as much as possible. Don't get me wrong, automation is expensive, but so is killing stuff, and what most people don't realise is over time the biggest expense you will have when it comes to keeping a reef tank is replacing all the things you accidentally killed. The upfront cost of some automation absolutely pays for itself over time. You just need to decide if you can trust yourself because I know I can't. Right, that's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.